Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video on the channel. My name is Dan and or Two Shoes and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So today we're going to be doing a bit of a studio tour around my setup, but it's not just my setup. In order to make this setup guide, I guess, a little bit more beneficial or educational for you guys, the point of this video is to kind of show you that you don't need all this fancy stuff. Everything that I show you here isn't something that I think you have to go and get or you won't do well on Twitch or YouTube, whatever. And again, I don't have this like crazy, like $50,000 studio, or whatever. I just have some equipment that I have built up over time that I think has worked for me and I wanted to show it off to you guys. The whole point of this video as well is to kind of highlight that, you know, you don't need this stuff. You know, some of it is just nice to have and some of it I feel is essential, but we'll get into all that. All right, without further ado, I'm going to pick you guys up from this position. We're going to get into the studio and then we're going to start talking about what I use to stream and why I think it's good. See you on the other side. What's going on? I'm over here now. So before we get into this video, I just want to let you all know that I haven't been paid or sponsored or reached out to by any company to talk about any product that I showcase in today's video. It's just all my own stuff and my own opinion. So I just wanted to be clear there. Just want to let you guys know as well that all the products I show today are linked below in the video. Those are Amazon affiliate links. So by clicking on them and if you want to purchase anything you see, it does support me as well. So I just want to let you guys know and be clear about that uh, going into the video. This seems like the cool thing to say on YouTube at the minute, so I'm just going to say it. Uh, according to my YouTube analytics, only 90... <laughs> according to my YouTube analytics, 91% of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you want to help me get that number down, maybe into the 80s, high 80s, I'm not going to be... <laughs> I'm not going to be greedy here. Please do subscribe on the channel as well. New videos every Monday, all on stream related and stuff you can do to... Just have a better time streaming, really. So now what I want to talk to you guys about is the essential things or the things that I deem that are essential to my setup. All right, so essential piece of kit number one, the Elgato Cam Link. This is a such an amazing piece of kit. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. Those of you that aren't, what this allows you to do is basically plug any camera, be it DSLR or mirrorless, directly into your computer and use it as a webcam. I think I paid about $130, $140 for mine, but they are so worth it. This guy is what I used before I had a Cam Link. Four months. This was a $17 basically cam link clone. All it says on it is HD video capture. It's a USB 2.0 little metal outline. I don't know how this thing works. Everything in your gut tells you that this should do a crappy job. It's awesome. If you have a camera lying around and you're not prepared to shell out for a cam link or you're not certain that it's like you want to use that camera, Absolutely pick up one of these guys, 17 bucks, and it's amazing. Now it only does 1080p at 30 frames a second. For the cost versus what you get, it's outrageous. Literally, I would have continued to use this until this day. The only reason I changed is because I wanted to record my videos in 4K, and I, when I'm recording at my desk, I just do it through OBS. I have my camera plugged in, I just record straight onto my computer, instead of onto the camera like I am now. And I wanted to be able to do it in 4K, and with this, I couldn't. Had I not been making videos in 4K, I would have used this. Now, if you're someone who cares about getting 1080p 60fps, then yeah, you're gonna need a cam link or something that supports 4K. But this guy, if you wanna test the waters, you wanna start off, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, the HD video capture can't go wrong. When I decided that I wanted to boost my quality on my stream a little bit in terms of camera or what camera I use, I went for the Sony ZV-1, which is actually what I'm filming this video on right now, and it's what I film all my videos on. In my opinion, my mic and camera are essential to my operation. I do think that having a camera and having a mic really do boost your stream up, for me anyway. Uh, I would feel a little bit uncomfortable if I didn't have a camera, but if you don't want to use a camera, by all means, don't use a camera. So I came across the ZV-1 online somewhere, I can't remember where, but I came across it online, and it was just amazing. It's a little fixed lens, mirrorless camera, it shot 4K, it had no record limit, you could record for as long as you want, it did slow-mo and built-in stabilizers, really good in-camera audio as well if you don't have a mic, a fully rotational screen. And I was like, oh, this thing's gonna be like a thousand bucks. I paid 550 euros for this camera. That's roughly about $660 at the time of recording. 
That's pretty good. For what this camera can do, it's pretty good. I use this camera on my stream. I then use it now to record my videos and I've never run into an issue with it. It looks nice, it's light. When I'm finished, if I wanna take it somewhere on the trip or whatever, I can just put it in my pocket and it's fantastic. I would highly recommend the Sony ZV-1, especially if somebody is looking to upgrade from a webcam, doesn't quite wanna go into DSLR territory, maybe they're unsure, they don't fully understand cameras yet. This thing is what you're looking for, it's great. All right, this next piece of kit that I use that I feel is essential may come as a bit of a surprise, but if you're someone who plays a lot of different games or for example, PC games, maybe you play on the Switch, maybe you have PlayStation, Xbox, whatever. If you do basically a variety of games between PC and console, you might want to check out one of these if you're not already. This is a HDMI switcher. It's the Muro Murocioa 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 HDMI switcher. This was 15 bucks on Amazon. Basically how it works is I have my monitors plugged in here that run into my capture card and into my PlayStation 5 and my Switch and my second monitor as well. And what it allows me to do is basically if I'm on my computer and let's say I'm playing a PC game for the first half of my stream and then I want to switch to my PS5, all I got to do is turn it on, click a button on the remote that it comes with, decide which input I want and it will automatically swap my monitor that I play my games on to that device. So for example, in the past, if I was streaming something on my computer and like a PC game and I wanted to play PlayStation, I had to get, like, pause my stream, get under my desk, find the HDMI cable, plug it out of my graphics card, which goes into my capture card, run that cable up the back of my desk and into the back of my console. It was a pain. It took a lot of time and it really kind of interrupted the stream. But with this, this just sits under my monitors. It's so small. You can barely see it. You could hide it. You could put it under a desk whatever, and there's tap of a button, it switches my PC to my PlayStation or to my Switch. Works perfectly, no latency on the game whatsoever, and it's just really made my workflow on stream a little bit better. And I know you're thinking like, hey, it's not really essential to your stream, like you can still stream without it. Yes, I absolutely could, but to be honest, at the price point that this comes in at, if it broke tomorrow, I literally would just buy another one straight away. I, I consider this essential. The next bit of essential kit I use is my audio interface, which is the Focusrite 2i2 first gen. Now, this only really applies to you if you use an XLR mic like me, but if you're considering switching over from say a USB mic or a headset to a XLR mic, you're definitely gonna need to pick up a audio interface and I definitely recommend the Focusrite 2i2. It is awesome, it's fantastic. I picked that thing up secondhand for 40 euros. You can buy them new for just over 100 euros, I believe, or $100. But anyway, it is, what this allows me to do, it allows me to plug in two microphones and have them working at the exact same time into my computer and then into my stream. I can control the levels of each mic. I can also hear myself in my headphones because my headphones, instead of going into my computer, go into the audio interface itself. And it allows me to hear myself, monitor my voice, make sure I'm not being too loud with zero latency at all. It's super handy. This thing is robust as all hell. I have dropped it. I've spilled water on it. I've spilled beer on it. <laughs> I spilled coffee on it and it's still working absolutely perfectly. But it is, again, just so essential to my operation. Without it, I can't use my microphone um, and you guys wouldn't be able to hear me. So I consider it essential. And again, if it broke tomorrow, I would buy it straight away. All right, let's talk microphones. This is the Shure SM7B. You've all seen it. A lot of streamers use this microphone. It is an absolute beast of a microphone. It is so, so good. Now, downsides to it is it's expensive. Will investing in something like this microphone completely change your stream? Look, you'll sound great. Will you sound $450 good or however much this mic costs? I don't think so. As I said, I've been a musician for years. I do some vocal stuff, I do a lot of singing. A mic like this suits me to invest in because I use it for multiple things. I use it for streaming, I use it for music, I use it for a, literally a plethora of things. It's a mic I use in all my videos, on all my streams every day and it is just dope. It's heavy, but it's dope. One thing to be careful with if you are looking to use a Shure SM7B is that it needs a bit of extra power. You can't just get this mic and plug it straight into something like a Go XLR or a Focusrite or an audio interface and expect to get an amazing result. It will work, don't get me wrong, but you need to use something like a cloud lifter, which gives it some extra power, or a fet head, which is what I use, which is essentially the same thing as a, a cloud lifter, but it's a lot cheaper. I use one of these. This is a fet head uh, made by a company called Triton. Again, link below if you want to check it out. There are these little things. You just plug the mic in here and then this end into your input, into your audio interface, and it works 
perfectly. To simplify it, what it does is it basically just gives the mic a little bit more power so you don't have to turn it up as much, hence getting lots of those room noise and getting all that kind of hissing or if you have an air con on or whatever, you get to use it at a lower volume, cuts out some noise floor, and it's, it's pretty good. Headphones, I use, again, you've probably seen them. Every podcast in the world use them. A lot of streamers use them. The Audio-Technica M50Xs, I believe they're called. Amazing headphones. Now look, I am not necessarily like an audiophile, right? I know that I know people out there who can put on a pair of headphones and be like, no, these, these are terrible. If I put these headphones on versus maybe a $50 pair of headphones, I wouldn't necessarily hear the difference. What I like about these headphones is that they're very comfortable. They're extremely, extremely, extremely comfortable, especially when you're streaming for long, long days. I have had headsets before that they start to hurt around the top of your head. They can start to get really uncomfortable around your ears. I've never experienced these and I have done, you know, 12 hour plus streams with these and never had an issue. That's why you see so many people use them. In my mind, it's worth it, especially if you wear glasses, right? I'm a glasses wearer, I'm not wearing them now. Again, trying new things. I also wear a lot of hats. I know I've had headsets in the past that when you're wearing hats, it hurts. I wear a lot of hats and I never feel, I never feel uncomfortable, ever. They also have fantastic noise cancellation on them. Um, not like that digital noise cancellation, but you know, you pop them on, you can't hear anything. Again, not essential to the setup. I could use a pair of wired iPhone ear, ear pods and probably be fine. But again, nice to have. All right, let's talk about foam paneling. Sound foam or acoustic foam or whatever you want to call it. It's something I see a lot of streamers buying and not a lot of people using correctly. Now, don't get me wrong. My room isn't filled with it. What this stuff does, I, wa I want to explain this stuff because I feel like a lot of people feel they have to buy it, but don't really know what it does. What this stuff does is it just stops any kind of bounce in the room. Do this now in your room. If you if you're in a kind of big room or whatever with no foam, if you shout and you can kind of hear that ringing or that like reflection of your voice off the walls, it's not quite an echo, but it's like a, it's kind of like a bong, 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 bong whatever but you get what I mean what this does is it just stops any of that echo like you should be able to clap and you should be able to just hear a dead clap and your clap should stop you shouldn't be able to hear like a ringing foam or say like coats on a wall or a big mattress or something helps with that especially good carpet in your room it helps with that a lot there's wooden floors in this room which isn't fantastic but having this foam on the walls helps. I leave a little bit of space between each one because I do want to keep a little natural tone in my voice. I don't want to have like a real dead kind of radio sound. I do want it to have like a little bit of a natural tone in my voice, which is why I keep them spaced out. So it, it does give a little bit of reflection at times. But hear me now, you do not need this stuff, especially if you're using a headset. You just don't need it. I've seen so many streamers who've spent, like this stuff isn't cheap. Like don't get me wrong, it's not the most expensive stuff in the world either, but it's not cheap. And I've seen people who've spent money lining their entire rooms if they're using a headset mic. It doesn't matter. Also, this stuff does not keep sound in. This is not soundproofing. It's literally acoustic treatment. It's making the sound better or more dead in the room that it's in. It's not keeping the sound in. You know, I've seen a lot of reviews on Amazon of people who bought this stuff and being like, I can still hear my son playing Fortnite in the next room. Total waste of money. Yeah, because that's not what this is for. As I said, I have it in front of me, behind me. I have some in the corners as well. Um, I will, I do plan on getting more. Ideally, I'd have some above me as well, just to have that little bit extra clean sound. But you know, it works really well. One thing to be aware of though, guys, if you're buying this, make sure it's thick. A lot of this stuff comes vacuum packed. By the time it comes out of the pack, when you open it, it's like wafer thin and you want it to be thick and absorb it. You want it to be about that thick. They, these panels are not very good quality. They're probably a bit too cheap. They're a bit too thin. In future, I'm thinking about getting some, maybe some thicker ones. But again, I'll link these uh, uh, below if you guys want to have a look at them. They do work, definitely had good results with them. All right, some background lighting. Everyone's, everyone loves background lighting these days. You don't see any YouTube video or any streamer these days without some lighting in the background. Where am I pointing? RGB strips, super, super cheap, super easy to set up. They stick right on the wall a lot of the time. They normally come with a little remote like this, a lot of different settings. You can dial in anything. They look real nice. They're fine. They break up the background and it's great. One thing I've gotten recently though is these little floodlights in the back. These are fantastic. They, these were great. They were such a great addition. They really did help. Found them on Amazon. They're just outdoor floodlights that I have pointed up at the wall and they just throw this beam of light up onto the wall and it's this really subtle separation. You'd be so surprised what a bit of backlighting can do to your studio. And even when I'm not streaming, when I'm just in here at nighttime playing games, it's just such a nice little vibe to have all these colored lights sitting there. It's really good for your mood. It helps you chill out a little bit. Got two of them on Amazon, $40 and they were amazing. They just sat behind me, throw them up. Again, they come with a little remote. They're fully RGB and I can throw them up right behind me and they're great. 
So the thing about setups is I want everyone to remember that setups can be kind of a dangerous thing. I think you see all these streamers with like these huge fancy setups with RGB stuff everywhere and the latest and greatest graphics cards, microphones, whatever. And I think that's a really dangerous thing because I think people see that and think that that's what they need if they want to be, be streamers, which I don't think is the case. Like you could, you've seen my setup. I do not have the best gear in the world. By no means is it the neatest thing ever. I know there's going to be comments about my cable management. Trust me, I'm trying. But I think that, you know, working with what you have is way more important than working with what you think you need, right? Like, oh, if I want to be a streamer, I need an RTX 3090 and I need a three grand camera and all these things. Like, no, you don't. You can accomplish a lot with a very modest setup. So I think the best thing to do is try not to be influenced by what other people have. Yes, sure, you can take pointers on gear and tips and stuff from other people, but you don't need to go out and think that you need to spend 10 grand on a setup, hundreds on lights, all these things just to be able to start creating content. Start creating content that's the number one thing and then worry about things that you need to upgrade at the end you should only go to upgrade something when you feel you are limited by your gear when it's such a point that something is starting to limit you that you can't accomplish what you need to what you want to accomplish because of your gear then you can move on but until then just work with what you have and have fun Ugh, all right that was my studio tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. Uh, this is like a weird type of video for me to do. I've never done a video like this before. So if you want to see more kind of walking around <laughs> stuff again on the channel, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you did like the video today, please leave a big thumbs up on it. That helps a lot. It's going to be really cool. Please do subscribe to the video as well. And also, lastly, I am live uh, four days a week on twitch.tv forward slash x2shoes. If you want to go check that out, chances are when you're watching this video, I'm live right now. I always love saying hi to everyone who comes over from YouTube. Anyone who does choose to do that, you absolute legend. That's a big ask, you know? As always, everybody, I've been Dan and or X2Shoes. I'll see you all next week for another video. I hope you all have amazing weeks on your streams and you make amazing content and you have a great time. And if you're not, don't worry about it. Just stay happy. Keep keep going. Keep on trucking. It will come. You are you rule. You're awesome. You matter. You're loved. I'll see you next week. Peace out.